Okay. Please work. Oh wow, that's bright. I'm looking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, aloha, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage, guys. I know it's been a, a quick minute. I do apologize for the lapse in time, but we have some exciting news. That exciting news is the Lone Star Hawaiian uh, 3.0 has arrived. So yes, our son has arrived as of uh, three days ago now, four days ago. He's inside sleeping. He's a freaking champ. He's in doing his fourth nap of the day. So we're gonna come out here and work a little bit. So guys, congratulations one for us because frick, we are a family of four now. Good thing we have our Lone Star Hawaiian family car here. Our SRT Dodge Charger. And if you are new, the original, the OG, the heart and soul of the channel, which is the 07 Silverado. Where we are is a little piece of paradise. I call the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. Thank you so much for being with me. Today is gonna to be a good one because today we are finally doing something about these lights. If you are new, you haven't seen the Garage Build series, I highly encourage you to go check out the Garage Build series. We have completely transformed this garage over the last few months, from the floors to the ceiling, to the cabinets, to the walls, to the floorboards, to the TV, to the thing over there. But we have a big problem, and that big problem is lighting. We are far from where I wanna be when it comes to lighting in this garage. We definitely need to figure that out. Yes, our equipment is a subpar to professional, but I really like the cinematic touch of videography. And given that lighting is a massive part of it, I want my lighting in my garage to be one, extremely cool and two, functional. So we have a few testers that I ordered a while back right here. What these are is Bar barina, bar bar barana, barana. And this is gonna be coming in three parts today. Part number one is testing. We're gonna test the actual length of these lights to be sure that I can kind of create the design that I'm thinking here in my head. Number two is gonna be wiring. How are we gonna wire these up correctly? Because I hate those plugs, those guys that I just plug it into an outlet in the wall and have to hit the switch on each and every, I don't like that, it's ugly. And three, here, what is the third piece? What am I thinking? What's the third piece? Okay, I remember the third piece is going to be finishing this all up and installing all of the lights. We only have a few over here and this is not enough for what I want to do. This is just the tester. I need to see exactly how long these lights are. They advertise four feet, but I think they're gonna be a little bit shorter than that and that's actually gonna drive uh, a significant impact with the design I'm doing. I'm done talking guys. It is time to probably move the charger out of the way. It's a complete mess guys. I know weather's been horrible, but charger's coming out of the garage and then we're gonna pull the ladder in here and we're gonna start testing out. I'm gonna let you know exactly kind of what I'm doing with this. It's kind of cool stuff. All right, here we go. Nice and clean, guys. I really, I, I couldn't even imagine the day in my life that I would be mopping my garage floor and it being this, I, I got nothing to say. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel. Really, this channel is the only reason I have the ability to do things like this. So again, before I get into this, thank you so much for being a part of this. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, be part of the channel. All right, so here we have our four foot strips and then our two foot strips. When it came to the actual size of these, the four foots are pretty easy to find, but anything smaller than four feet, I was having a trouble actually finding a company that made a similar one to this. So that's our power source there, that's the plug-in. And as I was doing some searching, I noticed there's a different company that actually makes a very similar light. The only difference is this is white, this is more of an aluminum finish. You're not gonna be able to see that at all where I'm putting them. So these are the two footers and they have the same exact plug. So we're gonna make the two footers and four footers friends and work together. But these are so incredibly thin. That is perfect for what I'm trying to do. This is gonna just blend in fantastic. So a few advantages of these. First off, they are incredibly light. The fact that these weigh almost nothing, this is gonna be so easy to mount up and I can actually just screw this into the drywall and not have to worry about any studs really at all because they're so incredibly light. And apparently they're really bright. So let's plug one of them in and see actually how bright these bad boys are. Woo, wow. 
Here we go, guys. How do I look? Now, Jim. Actually, that is really bright for a tiny light. That is amazing. Look at this. And the fact that I got these actually is kind of multi-purpose because I do want some under cabinet lights right here. And these will work for under cabinet lights as well. Just gotta mount that there. Look at that. That is amazing. Now remove that. Yeah, that's gonna be much better. Now the color temperature is 6500K, so extremely cool white. That's a 5000K right there. This is a 6500K, so is that. And what's also really cool about these, so here we have our two footer. This is our four footer. These are completely different companies that make and ship these, I guess, but they're linkable. There we are. Oh, look at that. <laughs> these are two different companies it's the same type of plug and yes they are just a hair different when it comes to the height and the build of them but these are 100% linkable and where I'm putting them really that's going to be just a seamless light which is exactly what I'm going for so we have two footers we have four footers I'm really hoping I don't need three footers because I can't find anybody that makes three footers all right so let me show you what's in my head we're going to lay these out real quick to see the length it's going to be epic So I thought this was gonna happen. So the companies that advertise that these are actually four feet, completely full of it because it's actually, four foot is here. So it's two inches short of four feet. Now that's not a fraction, that, that's a significant gap between four foot and not four foot. So these should be advertised 46 inches, not four feet. But it actually works out pretty well because I can fit one, two, three, four, five of the four foot strips and one two foot strip to run the length of my garage. So we're definitely doing the perimeter here, across the back, and that side as well. So we're gonna do perimeter lights, see how bright it really is, and then determine how many strips across we're gonna do as well. Yes, we are going 100% overboard on lights, and I told you we were gonna do overboard and go crazy with lights. We're definitely gonna do it. We're gonna go ahead and shift to part two of the video, which is the electrical work. That's the not so much fun part. No, I'm not a licensed electrician. Please don't do as I do or say, but I'm still living and I've done quite a bit of wiring stuff. So, so we're gonna go in the attic, figure out where we're gonna be tapping into power. We're gonna tap in the power because I want those light switches to be functional with the lights as well. All right, we are back from our trip to Lowe's. It is finally time to start the wiring, this is not gonna be very fun. So what we have here is a detailed schematic of my garage. But essentially this is the layout of my garage and fortunately the attic sits directly above my garage. It's actually really easy to work up in the ceiling here. What I'm gonna do, I have two light bulbs. I have a light bulb here and a light bulb there above the garage bays that are operated by a switch in the wall here. So I'm gonna use the power from these light bulbs to power the LEDs up and around the shop. So we're gonna run wires from the power source and install a few of these boxes to drop in power from the ceiling that's gonna power these LED light strips. All right, you guys, it's been a few days, but we are finally back because we got our package in the mail. Here lies a, a whole bunch of LEDs. There's eight LED strips in each of these boxes. We have one, two, three, four. We have all of these lights. We have their two footers. We're all ready to go. We have pre-wired pretty much everything already. All we gotta do is mount them to the top and feed the wires to those outlets that we put in a few days ago. We're gonna start here, do the perimeter first, and then we're gonna do the call them runners next. So, perimeter first, runners, ready, set, go. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law. We are all mounted up, we are tapped in the power, but before we kick it on and fire them up, I'm gonna show you real quick what I had to do. So the LED kits, the Barina, Barana, I don't know how to say it. When you buy a bunch of these, it's really cool because they provide a bunch of different wiring options. You can plug it straight into a wall socket, you can tap them together, or you can tap into your home power supply 
and wire them this way. And this is the way I'm doing it. But the issue is this side hooks into the light. This side has to get threaded through the drywall to that power source. And it's not long enough, really. Essentially, once you get through the drywall, there's really not enough to play with it. So what I had to do is break out my soldering iron and extend these a little bit further so we can actually tap into power up in the attic. Uh, I went ahead and just plugged it straight into the wall just to see what it looked like and make sure it worked. So without further ado, here we go, guys. Here is the wall illumination. Look at that. Oh, that looks good. So sick. This is gonna round out the entire garage. My goodness, it is bright in here. I might be a little over my head when it comes to brightness because I'm running one down this way, I'm running one down that way, and another one down that way, in addition to the border. So <laughs> it's gonna look like a freaking operating room in here. Try to catch me howling at the moon. All right, perimeter is done. Done, done, done. Perimeter's all done, wires are through the ceiling. It needs to be wired up in the attic still, but the perimeter's mounted up. Now it's time for the couple we're gonna run straight across here. So like I mentioned before, this crack in the ceiling that I patched and repaired, it's still really ugly. So I'm gonna use this as a guideline to mount my lights. So that's gonna cover that up real nice. And then I'm gonna do one additional row of lights right here. And then one last additional row of lights here as well. To the very end. Alright, welcome back to what I truly hope is the last day of these lights. We have completed this run of lights and that run of lights. We have the wires through the ceiling ready to be tapped in. The perimeter complete. We have one more run to go. We're basically gonna go right over the top of that truck. So right over the top of the Lone Star Hawaiian Silverado. Once we run that, get up into the ceiling and basically wire all the power together to that switch. Once that's done, we'll be done. We'll finally get a nice little reveal and then I'll finally have time to wash this car. It's a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and skip to this being done. I'm not even gonna record this for you guys because you already seen it. Quick check in guys, we have this run complete. It's now time just to feed that wire through that little hole I just drilled and then go up and tap into power. But I'm also gonna show you a little bit what I just did over here, which is we have cabinet lighting. So again, I mentioned the versatility of these lights. Boom, done with the cabinet. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but basically what I did was mount that up behind this valence that these cabinets do come with. So this is made for it. I have some two piece adhesive that's sticking this light to the cabinet. So again, it's not permanently mounted, but it is stuck on there good. And then here, what I had to do was actually shorten this up because I didn't want this wire hanging way down here. And here, got a simple switch and I'll eventually mount this to the top of the cabinet here. So when I want my light, I just simply come over here, put that on and I'm good to work. So there we have the cabinets, there we have the ceiling. I'm gonna head up in the attic and do the most agonizing part, which is wiring all these lights into that switch over there. We'll see you in about an hour when I finish all that up. What a mess. Guys, I am absolutely beat. I've been upside down in crawl spaces for the last like two hours, but we are all wired up. We have our two under cabinet lights all done. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this breaker over here, which should turn on just the two light bulbs. There's one, there's two. Okay, so just the two light bulbs are on. What I'm gonna do actually is turn this off. This second switch, we have two switches here. This second switch is just for the two light bulbs. So again, if we're leaving in the morning, coming home at night, we don't want the, call it operating room to lighten up. We just want the two light bulbs, we have that option. So turning that off and then untaping this. 
Had that tape so no one electrocuted me, so that's off currently. We're gonna take one last quick peek to make sure nothing's gonna blow up. One last checklist. So we have our main power source coming from there to this box. From this box, it splits off, goes this way to this side, which drops down and powers this wall. So we have the power going in right there. And then the other side splits off and goes this way along all of these wires and then drops in way down there in that corner. So that's one that powers that run there. We have two, which powers this run here. We have three which was that cut and splice I did earlier. Four, same thing. Then we have five, just under there, which powers this run here. Six, powering that run there. Seven, over in that corner, which powers this run along the back wall. Got it, got it, good, good, got it, good. So we're gonna come back down here. Ugh. And I really hope that this actually turns on because I've just spent a hell of a lot of hours on this. Okay, please work. Oh wow, that's bright, I'm looking. Oh, okay, hmm. this one's not on. But holy crap guys, look at this. Look at this place. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at that. That is tremendous. Okay, so we have two things to fix, obviously. This run right here is not powering up. I'm assuming I forgot to hook that in there, so I need to go back in and hook that power up. I did forget that one. And then this one here, for some reason, is not lighting up. This one actually kind of concerns me. So, that's in there. Okay. All right, let me do some digging really quick. I'm gonna fix this and be right back. Okay, this is ready for round two. Please work. Okay, so we figured out what was wrong with that one. Basically had a loose wire for the power. The other one wasn't even hooked up. So it's hooked up now, power's fixed. Three, two, one. Guys, this is a dream come true. Like, <laughs> I, I have no words to even describe this right now. It is, yes, it's incredibly bright. Yes, there's a lot of lights on the ceiling, but guys, from the design to the just basic creative illumination here at the wall in the corner, with how much larger this space now looks with those corner lights and how bright it is, every side of my hand is just illuminated no matter where I, <laughs> guys, I am so excited for this. Well done, guys. Well done. Here it is guys. I really have no words to describe what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> this is tremendous. This is again, a dream come true. Not only have you just built essentially my dream garage I've dreamed about my entire life. I've actually just exceeded my own expectation, which 
I don't know. It sounds kind of bad, but kind of good at the same time. But guys, take a look at this. This is tremendous. You know, I want to, I knew she thought about the pattern I wanted to lay these lights in. I wanted to serve a purpose, obviously, being brighter in here. But at the same time, I wanted to create some kind of a, a cinematic illumination. That's why I went around the perimeter. And then that's why I went with straight strip LEDs. Now, this would have been such an easy, easy project if I would just kind of do as it intended. Plug it into a wall, have a random switch, and be able to just kind of tag them all together with the 10 foot cords. But I wanted to create a seamless line. And I wanted to create them across the garage and make this garage truly look bigger than it actually is. Guys, this is only a three car garage. This is a traditional home, three car garage, nothing too special about it, but we've created a giant space by using just essentially light. At the same time, we've been able to create that little corner in there, the little paradise cove, I'm gonna call it, of a location just to work on stuff. We have our cabinets, we have our stainless steel worktops, we have a speaker, we have a TV, we have our toolbox. Guys, this is my dream garage. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Lone Star Hawaiian Dream Garage. I am just without words. If you are interested, if you are interested in these lights, in the setup, I'll put links in the description below for everything we've used today. There were two companies, two types of light. One was a four foot, one was a two foot. Now we tied the four foots and two foots in together because some of these locations, you just couldn't go across with four foot. Right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you so much for all the love on the channel thus far. Again, this has not happened without you being on the other side of this screen. So thank you again so much for all the support you've given me from day one until now, from the OG Lone Star Hawaiian Silverado to the new SRT Charger, to the green garage, to this garage build and to Texas. Guys, again, thank you so much. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, Lone Star Hawaiian on Instagram, get sneak peeks, updates there before you see anything drop in on YouTube. But it's late. I've been working in the garage forever. Until next time, we'll see you in a few days for the next video. As always, aloha. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Good job. What's up, my dude? The lights are done. Ready? <laughs> oh, that's so bright, isn't it? <laughs>